So I'm curious how, maybe you've experienced this in your career, how do you think about the balance in particular in terms of the, I love the expression chicken or the egg in this instance, it's very specific. Do you have to go and cultivate the egg itself or can you rely on the fact that the chicken will show up because you've done the work, you know, sort of uh, before that, if you will, to, to allow the opportunity for it to do so? How do you think about that? So I think it, it depends so much on, uh, on the stage that the company is at in terms of its maturity. Are you working with founders that are technologically inclined and still feel that they can conquer the world and they're not prepared for that kind of a much more complex interaction with the market through partners? Uh, Nico, founders you- never feel that way. So they're <laughs> they're so always logical. Come on. They're always straightforward <laughs> while taking over the world. I mean, you know, in context. Uh, for the large part, yes. Um but you'll be surprised. Some founders with a previous experience will build yeah. a company that is intentionally partner first. Uh, yeah. But if, if you're looking at a more mature organization, and that, of course, comes with you know having customers at its back and, and having figured out so many things internally that they can externalize now, um, it, it could be a different dialogue. How much credibility and, and who is bringing the alliance function into the organization? That means a lot in terms of how much work you need to do to establish that trust and the preparedness to invest. Yeah, I, it's actually, I would double down on that. I would say in part to offer my own kind of, um, you know, topping, if you will, to your statement, but there's, there's the, the value that you have, the trust, the sort of um, time and seat, um, if nothing else, but certainly the, the belief that you are making the right decision. But it's also, I've heard this from, from a lot of folks in alliances and partnerships. It's about the, you know, validation that your partner is the right partner. It's the, the validation that they are the right one in the market, which you get, I think, from partners that are more well-established. And so if you're an organization that is at scale and you're further down the road and you're thinking about building a partner program, what you're saying, and if I'm wrong, correct me here, but what I'm hearing is think about it in terms of looking for all the things we've talked about, the better together stories and the sort of mutual moments of value and such, finding the balance in terms of how we think about chicken before the egg, totally agree, but also who you're in partnership with, right? Is that what I'm hearing you say too? Like who is this business, right? Where are they in the the market? What's their sort of um, opportunity and and how can they help you penetrate further or wider in that sense? Absolutely. So you remind me of, reminded me of a conversation with, with one of our board members a few weeks ago where um, we talked about the types of companies that you would partner with. And, and one of the, the things that he voiced, we, you know, we talked about the portfolio of companies that this, this, that his uh, VC owns. And we thought, are there synergies that we should be looking at across the portfolio? And he said, well, the last thing you really want to do is to put two executive teams that are running around with their head cut off, trying to stand up their companies uh, to partner up together. You want to partner with someone large, with someone who's been in the market for a very long time, if you are a smaller company. And to that end, then you go and you analyze, who should I partner with? Is it this kind of category or that kind of category, this big or that big? It's really hard to tell. Some things could be really obvious, but it's still hard to tell. And the most obvious things might still not play out. Um, So you kind of have to take your risks and chances, but you need to do your homework. And if you're making a bet, it needs to be as educated of a bet as possible. But as you think about that one plus one equals three, if what you came up with you came up together with a partner and and there's two people, one on each side that get excited about it and they think, yeah, that could be awesome. And then you have a few more people to be, to to bounce this off within each organization and they all come back with a sentiment that, yeah, this could be powerful. We could bring some greater value to our joint customers together. That could be one of those first signs based on the fact that, you know, you did your homework, it's the right partner, it's the right category and everything. If that enthusiasm is there, you should definitely explore. That doesn't mean you need to put a million dollars tomorrow or stand up a 20, you know, engineers to to facilitate some crazy uh, integration, but explore a bit further. And sometimes taking it to customers and asking, is this something that you would perceive as valuable? That could be part of the dialogue as well. But hey, there's still a lot of gambling uh, in our or in our in our world. Um, if you make an educated bet, it's much less of a gamble and a lot more of a of a good, healthy risk to take upon yourself. Yeah, it's worth highlighting. Like I think the 
the thing that I'm hearing most and what you're saying is do your research, but then explore to your point. Like, I think you can do, you can spend your time looking at data and you can look at, you know, certainly market TAM and you can read galore. And there's a lot of folks talking right now in particular around what partnerships will be a lot of speculation. But in my experience, what you're saying is, is the most accurate and valuable approach in terms of intelligent and intentional research, a little bit of a deep explore thereafter. And then it is a gamble. I think what you're talking about, though, is making an educated bet, making a bet that is informed, that is intentional. And I think with that intention comes a bit of perhaps leeway is the right term here, like thinking about it as far as if you can, um, I talked to another guest about like the idea of partnerships and exploration of partnerships being a lot like the scientific method. Like you observe something, you do some research, you form a hypothesis, you run an experiment. And if the experiment proves that the hypothesis is accurate, then you've kind of proven your theory. I think what you're describing is very much that in the framework of that the research stage and this early part of exploration of what a good fit looks like requires a little bit of faith, a little bit of like that sort of, um, you know, everyone hang on moment. Mm -hmm. And that that comes with, I were to kind of circle back on your statement before that comes with the validation that you're going to get through time and seat, through experience in the industry, through the, the, um, the trust and background that you bring to the organization, but that that bet, that calculated decision should not be, you know, betting the entire farm, if you will, or whatever you want to call it, right? Not, not Absolutely. putting all your chips in the basket. And you know, think about it. I'm even thinking of an, of an example if you put a really good account executive um, out there into the market, um, that person will, will on average convert one of three, four deals, right? So three opportunities yeah. will, will die. But that person, that account executive will bring his solution engineers and, and product people and whatever thought leaders that make sense. He could bring a lot of people together and the deal could still die towards its end. Now, that account executive qualified the customer. He identified the champions and the economic buyers and the fit and the problem and the, um, and the timelines and everything. Three out of four won't close. So I think building a partnership is on a different scale and the potential ROI is on a different level, obviously. Uh, but as you start up those figuring out who should you partner with, yes, there is the scientific aspect, but do you click? Is there, you know, I, you, you mentioned me talking about empathy and, and understanding the other side. Is there a click? Are you seeing yeah, that's the, on the other side that will that you want to and you can feel that they yeah. want to walk a long road with you together. Yep. Yeah, that's the human to human part. I, I was talking to a friend recently and he was kind of joking, if you will, but saying, you know, B2B and B2C and what is all this? What about H to H? What about human to human? I think what you're describing most importantly is the part of this that we all, I, I mean, I, I like to perhaps dream this and, and maybe it's a little bit um, ethereal in that sense, but I, I think we all enjoy partnerships because it, it is a people centric business. Like We are here Absolutely. to help each other. Yeah, that feels logical to me. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there, um, like, as you think about building ecosystems, kind of wrap up this episode, is there anything else in terms of a framework that you use early on, right? Because you're talking about, and I think this is a really valuable conversation. I appreciate it because you're talking about the scaled ecosystem. You're not talking about four people starting a company in their basement. We, we've touched on it briefly, this idea that there are partner-led organizations. They are showing up more and more. I've certainly seen it across even my my short time in, in seat last seven, eight years. But what about those organizations that are at scale? If I'm a, you know, I'm a partner manager, I'm a, a head of alliances, I'm whatever I am. I just joined an organization. It's pretty big. It's got scale. It's got product market fit. Um, however many employees is irrelevant, but most importantly, like it's working here. What's, let's say the first three things that you do in your first six months. So if someone says to me in the interview process, what's your 30, 60, 90 plan, your 30, 60, 90 day plan? Any advice or feedback you'd have for that person as they think about framing out what an ecosystem means to that organization? Sure. Um, it's a deep question to wrap up a podcast. Um, <laughs> I would start with learning and understanding the lay of the land. There are so many types of partnerships. You know, I think a lot of what I said today comes lar largely from a prism of uh, software partnerships. But what kind? Right, is it an ISV? Is it an OEM? Is it is it is it 
resellers, referrals? Is it something completely different? There's so many different models uh, that would suit different types of companies in different industries, verticals, and stages of maturity. So I think figuring out what's the lay of the land, uh, what kind of engagements that are realistically partnerships but have not been framed as such as are already in place, and, and where can you add most value? And adding that most value is what can you imagine, what is it that you can imagine someone partnering with you and actually building a strategic business unit around, your, around you? What resonates as most logical? So looking for those paths that you can become strategic enough for someone in some kind of a model, that will be something that I would look for. And in parallel, I would try to understand the level of of confidence and appreciation and understanding of the of the motion of alliances uh, to understand how 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 far are you from aligning expectations, how big is the appetite and the preparedness to invest and go the long road. You know, it could easily take two, three, if not more years to stand up something vi- valuable for the company. So do you need to do something much simpler with much less impact, but something that builds credibility over the first six to 12 months? Or can you plunge right into the longer term, the more complex, the more strategic stuff that would really move the needle for the company a few years later? So those are the two kind of things that I would seek to understand over the first three to six months. That's fantastic. So listen and learn and, and observe through that learning uh, appetite for investment and and time. Obviously, it's that's brilliant. Actually, it's fantastic advice to end on. So, thank you for that, Nika. This has been great. I've enjoyed I'll having just you. Add on. That that's learning. Yeah, please, that learning never ends because yeah, yep. people change, leadership changes, the state of the company changes. So you have to constantly reevaluate. Are you still on the same page with everyone? Are you still on track with what you're doing? But that will be the beginning. I like that though. It's, uh, it's worth highlighting. I'm glad you, you brought that up too, because it's a measure of a starting point, but that there is no sort of end in that sense. It continues mm-hmm. on and reflection and acknowledgement and measurement and all the things we've talked about in the show. And I'm sure you've experienced in your own roles, you know, makes all the difference. So it's great. I'm glad you added that. It's good. Um, well, cool. Look, again, this has been a fantastic conversation. If folks want to connect with you, if they want to, you know, obviously have their own conversation separate from this, where do they find you? Sure thing. Well, you can find me on LinkedIn, Nikolai Avrutov Rosterchuk. You can find me there uh, or on Partnership Leaders. I'm a member. Awesome. I love it. Well, thank you again. Fantastic conversation and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Look forward to our next chat. Take care. Thanks, Barrett. Thanks for hosting me.